Hello and welcome to the 12th part of the DIY Lithium BMS series. In this part we're going to be taking a look at using an STM32 microcontroller as opposed to an Arduino in order to control this whole thing. Now for this project specifically, the STM has two specific advantages. One is that it's faster and the other is that the ADCs are more accurate. So to attempt to give you some idea as to the speed of this thing, this is what the display looks like when it's running with the STM32 chip. And you can kind of see it flicker every once in a while. I can see on the camera screen, like it looks like a line goes down the screen. That's every time that it's refreshing. And you can see the numbers change as well. You can see how fast they're flicking back and forth. Now I'll find some footage of what it looks like when it's running with the Arduino. And you can go ahead and compare how fast the screen updates as opposed to how fast it's updating with the STM chip. And I can tell you right now, it's way faster with the STM chip. Now, is it really that useful to have it run that much faster? Probably not, but the main thing here is that you do get more precise ADCs. Now the main thing that I have noticed having those more precise ADCs on this chip is that the current measurements are more precise. The voltage measurements seem to be pretty similar to what they are with the Arduino. They don't seem to get a whole lot more resolution, but the current definitely gets a lot better. And most of that is likely due to the fact that I'm using the 30 amp ACS712 sensor, so the thing really doesn't have that much uh, voltage output when you're only pushing like half an amp through it or something like that. So you do get more resolution out of these ADCs, or 12 bit as opposed to 10 bit on the Arduino. Let me go ahead and unplug everything on this. And with the power off, I'll go ahead and pull this monstrosity of a bodge board out. That is where the Arduino Nano would normally plug in. And this is the thing that replaces the Arduino Nano. Yes, this is uh, slightly ridiculous. It's got one of these, uh, they're called blue pill development boards on the top. These are definitely not as user friendly as a traditional Arduino. They're a little bit harder to set up and I will do a video on that eventually. But anyway, this is what I'm using as the microcontroller. Now, as you can probably tell, this thing is uh, kind of a bodge and you can see even more bodges on the bodge. And this is because this microcontroller is a 3.3 volt microcontroller as opposed to the Arduinos, which of course are five volt microcontrollers. So for some of the analog inputs, such as the push buttons and the ACS712 sensor, I had to add voltage dividers on this in order to knock the voltage down. I just kind of threw these voltage dividers on here. They're just two to one. So if this would output five volts, this is only gonna get 2.5 into the microcontroller instead of the full 3.3. But, but this was basically just a test to see if it would work or not. It's not uh, meant to be perfect. Also, I would probably at least attempt to set this stuff up to be uh, set up for 3.3 volt as opposed to five volt, uh, especially the push buttons. The push buttons would be really easy. The ACS 712 may have some kind of 3.3 volt equivalent, but uh, uh, I'd have to look into that. Anyway, if you wanna see the rest of this, it's basically just a whole bunch of wiring to make the pins down here line up with the pins on this. So when this plugs in, it's just a direct replacement for an Arduino Nano, basically. And in here, the other side of it's basically just a whole bunch more wiring. And then this side, just another set of pin headers. And this board I left a little bit of space on so I can add some more stuff to it if I needed to. As you may be able to tell by the length of the headers on these guys, the Arduino Nano has significantly less pins than the a uh, little blue pill development board here, which that may allow me to add a bit more functionality and things to this project. All right, so I guess the biggest question with something like this is how much did I have to change the code? So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So one of the best things about that little blue pill board is that it is compatible with the Arduino IDE. Now it's a little bit difficult to set up. Uh, it's not as easy as an Arduino where you can just plug it into the computer and have it work. You have to do a quite a bit of setup procedure in order to get the board to actually be able to talk to the Arduino IDE, but it's not too difficult, at least once you've done it the first time. And once you've done that, the code is pretty much interchangeable. It's not exactly the same. Obviously, I've had to make some differences here. So, so anyway, what I have here is the Arduino version of the code on the left-hand side of the screen and the STM version of the code on the right-hand side of the screen. So first off, a couple of the values in this area had to be changed. Uh, this is because we're using a higher resolution ADC, as I mentioned earlier, 
The little blue pill board has a 12-bit ADC, so we're working from a range of 0 to 4095, as opposed to the Arduino, which has a 10-bit ADC, which has a range of 0 to 1023. So this value and this value had to be changed because those have to do with uh, analog reading. So really, the biggest thing here was just remapping the pins. So now you can see over here all the pin names are like PB5, PB6, uh, which is a little bit odd compared to the Arduino where they're just numbered, you know, 2, 3, 4, but uh, that's just how it's set up. You have uh, pins that are PA, PB, and PC on the, uh, on the board. So you'll see those throughout here. And you'll see the biggest differences here are essentially just changing the pins. Now one thing that I did have trouble with for a little while here and something that I kind of messed up when I wrote the original version of the code is that every time I put something like this, where I wanted the uh, LCD to say something like initializing, just uh, just the word initializing, I always put LCD.write initializing. And technically, I think with the Arduino LCD library, it is supposed to be LCD.print. Now, for whatever reason, with the normal Arduinos, the lcd.write command worked just fine to do this. For some reason, with the STM compiler, uh, lcd.write would not work with that at all. It gave errors about wrong type of data or something like that. So I changed that to lcd.print, and that fixed basically all the issues that I had with it. Now, lcd.write is a legitimate call, and the only thing it seems to be used for, or the only thing that I use it for in this code anyway, is when I use this little character here. So that's the inverted colon that I use to indicate cell balance. And that's the only time that lcd.write gets used. All right, so everything in the void loop should be the same. Pretty much everything in here is going to be the same. The only big differences between this code is going to be everywhere that there's an analog value, the analog value is going to be different. So you can see here I have 800 and 750, and over here I have 2,000 and 1,700. So that's just the adaption between a 10-bit ADC and a 12-bit ADC. Also, if you are curious, the uh, on these STM boards, the serial print commands work just like they do on the Arduino. Uh, pretty much no difference between them. So our next biggest difference is going to be in the void take measurements part of this code. And again, it's the same or a very similar thing where everything has been changed from 1,024 to 4,096. And some other things also had to be changed in here like the uh, amp sensor because we're using a 3.3 volt reference for that now. This had to be changed from 5,000 millivolts down to 3,300 millivolts. <clears throat> and of course, again, the 4096 versus 1,024 thing. Another little change is this line and this line are a little bit different. Now the way that my ECS712 sensor is set up, for every one amp of current going through it, the output voltage of the sensor goes up by 66 millivolts. So that's why this is divided by 66, basically converts that into amps. And over here I have it set to 33 because as I mentioned before, I have a two to one voltage divider on that so that I can convert the 5 volt sensor down into a 3.3 volt sensor. Again with these three we've changed the 1024 and the 4096. Now one thing that I was kind of surprised about with this code is that I didn't have to change the voltage measurements all that much. Now if you recall from a previous episode one of the issues of using the Arduino's ADC as a voltmeter is that it uses the 5 volts as the reference for the ADC. Now what that means is if your voltage drops to 4.5 volts or goes up to 5.5 volts or anywhere in between that, anything that's not exactly 5 volts, it's going to throw off your voltage measurements. Because of that, I put in the voltage reference and a bunch of code to go along with it in order to compensate for any changes in the supply voltage. Now what I was kind of surprised about is that this code was able to compensate for the supply voltage going from 5 volts with the Arduino all the way down to the 3.3 volts that the STM chip uses and still be completely accurate. Now there is sort of an issue on the reverse side to that and that is the amperage sensor, the ACS712 sensor is not compensated for in any way if the supply voltage changes and it will, the reading of that sensor does change with the supply voltage. And the reason why there's no compensation for that is because 
if the supply voltage changes to the Arduino, then the supply voltage is also going to change to the ACS712 sensor. So both of the voltages will change an even amount and the ADC value readings will change by the same amounts. So the change in supply voltage there doesn't actually affect the accuracy of the ACS712, assuming that the supply voltage for the ACS712 and the supply voltage for the Arduino are the same. And of course they would be because they're coming from the same power supply. Now with the STM board they are not the same because it's obviously running a separate 3.3 volt regulator. And because of this we're pretty much relying on the fact that the 5 volt regulator on that board puts out almost perfectly 5 volts. Which this might cause issues if our 5 volt rail were to ever change uh, voltage it would probably throw off the current reading which is not a huge deal but it could cause a little bit of an issue. Uh, it's not something I'm too worried about yet because as I mentioned the, uh, the STM is just kind of a beta test right now. Well the whole project is kind of a beta test right now but the, uh, the STM part's a very beta part. Other than that, there aren't really too many concerns with running the STM chip. There's also not a whole lot of changes with the code. Uh, the biggest thing was, as I mentioned, just changing the LCD.write to LCD.print, which apparently I did actually use LCD.print a couple times in this code. I know LCD.write's all over it too, so uh, that had to be corrected in order to run properly on the STM chip for whatever reason. So anyway, that's about it for this video, guys. In the future, I am going to make a video on how to set up one of those STM boards to communicate with the Arduino IDE. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about using an STM board instead of an Arduino for this project. Click on that subscribe button if you want to see the next video in this series. And that's about it for now, guys. Bye.